It is no secret that the twin island nation of Trinidad and Tobago is the oil capital of the Caribbean. What is mystifying is the significant role the empty oil drum has come to play during the country's annual four-day pre-lentil festival called Carnival. Denied social acceptance at birth, Pan literally has become a bonding agent for the 1.2 million people that comprise Trinidad and Tobago's multiracial population. Pan is the sobriquet of the 20th century's newest and most novel instrument, and panorama has become a ritual that attracts the single biggest outpouring of musical steel to be found anywhere. Participants are called panists, and hardcore supporters of the art form are referred to as panatics. There is even a steel band that goes by the name Pandemonium and the governing body of the country's 150 registered bands is Pan Trinbago. Pan is a derivative of the family of crude percussion instruments created by African descendants in Trinidad in the late 1930s. Its genesis is still a head-scratcher even for local trivia buffs. Old-timers mark the demise of bamboo music during the period as a reference point for Pan's early fortunes. When the government banned bamboo playing during World War II, the displaced musicians simply grabbed anything they could get their hands on. Dustbin covers, buckets, pots and pans, and pounded out a rhythmic cacophony with sticks and spoons. Severe abuse of these crude instruments caused indentations to be formed on the surface of the early pans. And by chance, musical notes, albeit with pitch as harsh as the social conditions linked to society's underclass. By the early 40s, the founding fathers slung pans around the neck. And in the span of a few decades, innovators such as Ellie Manette, Neville Jules, Winston Spree Simon and Bertie Marshall, among others, produced better sounds and a variety of instruments for the largely urbanized medium. Band sections now include tenors, double tenors, double seconds, guitar pans, quadraphonics, tenor basses, basses, and the Harmony and Marshall tone pans exclusive to the Whitco Desperado steel band. Today, Pan is renowned in concert halls around the world, in commercial jingles, movies, and lately as a key instrument in jazz ensembles. And in a literal sense, Pan has attained lofty status. What with its image proudly displayed as the logo on the aircraft of BWIA, the national carrier, which brings in passengers by the thousands from Canada, the United States and Europe, especially at carnival time. Situated on the northeast shoulder of Venezuela, Trinidad and Tobago generally amazes the visitor. Not only is the country the birthplace of pan, limbo and calypso music, but also it produces a mixture of races, creeds and cultures that reflects the slave trade, immigration of East Indian indentured laborers and long periods of French, Spanish and British colonizations. And though the country achieved its independence from the British in 1962, one can still discern, particularly in Port of Spain, the nation's capital, the historical influences of some of the most definitive expressions of European architecture in the seven magnificent buildings that cut a regal air in a quarter-mile stretch around the Queen's Park savannah, an outdoor arena for the sports-minded, as well as the main battleground for the Panorama Championships. The competition attracts some 80 bands from both islands. A band selects a song from a plethora of current calypsos 
and packages the melody in 10 minutes of creative arrangement and improvisations. A panel of judges awards points for tonal quality, arrangement and interpretation. Over the course of two weeks and following a series of preliminaries and finals in the band's respective zones, the contest is narrowed to six national finalists for the old-time steel bands and 12 participants in the conventional steel band category. The event begins on a Saturday evening in San Fernando in the Southland, but the paramount occasion falls on Panorama Sunday in Port of Spain. In general, um, I think it's the biggest music music festival in the world, where you have. Uh, a lot of different bands, arrangers, musical arrangers, uh, rhythms, percussions, vision of cultures, everything, in one, at one festival on one occasion. As I see Panorama, it's the music reflects the African uh, part of the culture, and everyone participate. I mean, everyone is out there. All the uh, the races in Trinidad is out there, and they're jumping up together, and, and and really they do come together in a very free spirit to enjoy themselves uh, at Panorama. performing on stage during the preliminaries, tuners are still busy hammering notes into perfection and sharpening the pitch of the pans they've just created. For Roland Harrigan, one of the many of a band of excellent tuners, work has only just begun. Okay, step one is to get it down to, to eight inches. Step two is to put the note into place. Well, in other words, draft in the notes. That's step two. Step three is to take the punch and the hammer and groove the, the, the notes that you draft out. And step four is to cut and burn. For instance, if we don't um, burn the pants and you try to tune it, you don't get you wouldn't get that brilliance from the steel. So we have to temper it to get that flexibility. Step five is the actual tuning of the instrument. Uh, the happenstance of, of, of history is that by hitting upon a steel drum, they could tune the membrane in a lasting way. It's 
not that tune membranes for drums are new. That's not the point. The point is that this this drum can hold its tuning for a particular length of for a length of time, and also will accommodate a number of different notes on the same membrane in a very specific way because there are grooves in between each note and therefore you can isolate a note and make it work for you. Before the pans are fine-tuned, they undergo a complex chroming process at an engineering firm. to the semi-finals, where 20 bands must compete for 11 slots to play against the champion steel band, Amoko Renegades. Renegades is trying to cop an unprecedented three championships in a row. Amoko's public relations officer, Frank Allen, says the band's success isn't accidental. To the contrary. The way we work with the renegades is that we deal with them with total respect, absolute respect always. We have never behaved as though we as a sponsor own the band. The band is independent to make their decisions. Uh, in terms of budget, it varies. I can't give you a figure that we spend on renegades every year. It varies according to the needs. They would organize a budget and they would come to us and say these are the things that we want to do and um, it will be reviewed and approved. And when I talk about budget here, I want to make a point that while I work with the band, our official liaison with the band is a guy called Desmond Bala from our office. And I want to congratulate him for the fantastic job he has done in keeping this whole thing together and actually pushing the band forward to the kind of success that the band has achieved. He is a direct liaison with him. There's very little money in it. And the glory, if there is any, is a collective glory, and no one man can shine. And it's very strange, because it comes out of a people who are supposed to be feckless, who are supposed to be idle, who are supposed to be worthless, and yet they do this thing every year, and the carnival turns the society around and says, look at yourselves. You're not what, what people say you are. You are something else. Um, I like it.